Well, we've gone through another year here, and let's, let's just kind of go through some of the highlights of what happened to Honeypath this year. Uh, the year started out, I guess, like everybody else, getting kind of getting back on our feet from COVID. Yeah, we, uh, we, we had a rough time as well as everybody else did, but we were able to, our planning committee was able to pull everything together and have a good slate of events this year for the town of Honeypath. We started out uh, in January with our diversity day. Um, I think the planning committee is going to change that to um, February this coming year is going to be um, African American Day, and then we'll have a diversity day later on in the year to celebrate all the diversity here in Honeypath. Um, I think October. Um, it's become a lot more diverse down here, hasn't it? It really has. And February is, um, you know, African American Month, and then we're going to have our um, day set aside, and I'm sure they'll we'll all plan that just like we have been. It's growing every year. The crowd's getting bigger. The the events are getting bigger. Uh, so we started out with our diversity day in February, and we moved into a, a spring event. Um, unfortunately, it didn't turn out quite as well as we wanted. So we're probably going to scrap that going forward and not have a spring event. Um, our Memorial Day event's growing as well. I, th I think there was probably three or four dozen people there this year, where in the past it's been 10 or 12. So um, Memorial Day's growing um uh, fourth of july was a huge hit again it was it was huge um uh, we we really hit a home run on that the planning committee i just can't brag on them enough they've done so much for this town and uh Demeka slaybaugh and shannon ellison miss dot and sam and mandy and myself and uh the youth council guy yeah, can't not mention them they've been a huge help they've done a lot for the town and uh, rebecca robinson and her husband dale they they really do a lot downtown, cleaning up and keeping the bushes and the shrubs tr trimmed and neat. Um, but our 4th of July was a hit. I mean, it really was a big hit. And then uh, we moved into um, October uh, planning. So we had our Sugarfoot Fall Festival. Um, in 2023, we will move the um, honey sopping competition to the fall event in October. It's going to be the second Saturday in October uh, going forward. Um, just just a great, great turnout for everything but except the spring event. Um, so we've had a lot of a lot of good um, events work well. Um, had a good turnout for the Christmas parade, even though it rained a little. Had a real good turnout for the Christmas parade. It, it did rain towards the end there. I think people toward the back uh, they probably got wet, but. You know, one of the good things about being mayor, you get to ride up front at the parade. So uh, we was in in my truck. We didn't get wet anyway. But uh, parade turned out real well. We um, had our wreaths across America uh, festivities yesterday. It started at the flagpole down here at the Veterans Monument and uh, had a few people speak and national anthem was sang. And uh, then we went over to Eastview Cemetery and I probably laid gosh, I'm going to say a hundred wreaths of there for uh, veterans and all the veterans um, plots were marked with a flag so it was easy to spot and then find, you know, what branch they, they've served in. And, and why are we on that subject? Uh, I just got to say I, I respect all our veterans and those that didn't make it home, um, they, they give the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. So, um, but it turned out real well. So we got our gala coming up on uh, New Year's Eve at one of our event centers here close by um, to raise money for next year's events. Um, looks like that's been planned out real well. Um, a lot of things was going on right around the time of um, the, the state of the town address that we had planned and we postponed it till January, but I think they met while I was out of town. and. Decided just to have one this year. We're going to move it to September. So the state of the town address by me and council will be um, in September next year. Um, I am up for re-election next year. I wanted to go ahead and plug that. Uh, let everybody know I am running. I will be running for mayor again. Uh, I think I've done the town a, a decent job. I think for the most part people are happy with what I've done and what I'm ab about to do. And let's get on into that. Uh, I think we spoke before um, Mike Gamble, Senator Gamble, and uh, House of Representative Jay West. They've secured us a million dollars um, in the state's budget for Chicola Mill cleanup. Uh, we got a couple investors involved that want to 
develop the land once it's cleaned up. So we should start um, maybe March or April time frame starting to clean that mill up. Um, uh, Cardno has changed names to Stintac now. I think I said that right, but they're uh, they're our consultant on the cleanup, and they're uh, requesting a 1.9 million dollar grant from the federal government to help us clean that up. So we can put that with the one million we got. That's three million dollars. We ought to be able to clean that place up completely if we get that grant. If we don't get that grant, we will be using that one million dollars to remove debris from the mill site, though. Um, that money is not going to slip through the fingers or through the cracks and get spent elsewhere. It is earmarked 100 percent for Scola Mill, and as soon as um, we can get everything in line, we're going to start using that money for that. People who aren't familiar with that site, particularly, it's it's a big big piece of land in a really good location, right? It's um it's on the Mill Village side of town, but it's um. It's within a quarter mile from Main Street. It's just right off Chicola Avenue. So a um, little bit of information. The mill was built in 1902, uh, served the town for many, many years. In 1934, there was a strike at the plant. And um, from the articles I've read, the plant manager was also the mayor of Honeypath at the time, and he ordered... Um, ordered his guys to fire on the crowd and seven people lost their life in 1934 here in Honeypath due to a, a cotton mill strike. So a lot of history over there. Y'all have a marker out here in the park. The, the, the marker's actually still over at the, at the mill. Oh, okay. We are going to move that um, when they demolish it. We're going to keep that um, monument and, and probably put it back on the property over there once it's developed. But um, speaking of cleanup, um, some uh, citizens in Honeypath have bought the old shirt plant over here uh, on the back side of uh, the south side of town and uh, started demolishing it. There's some four or five big piles of rubble over there that uh, rubble that um, needs to be hauled off, but that, that's coming together over there. It's another eyesore coming down. Uh, I think they'll do great things with that, with that plot of land once it's, um, once it's demolished and refurbished. Uh, I'll let them tell you what they're going to do with it if they wish. But um, look good. A lot of good things going on in town. Did you add another vehicle to help people haul off their own stuff this year? Not necessarily a vehicle. We did buy a trailer or two. And what we do is we loan these trailers out and like a landlord. We've got a lot of landlords in Honeypath and um, a lot of not so great tenants sometimes. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it is what it is. They don't pay, and when they get evicted, the, usually all their stuff they don't. They just leave. They leave it in the house. So instead of piling all that by the road and waiting on the maintenance crew to come by and get it, and I come up with the idea: we'll just loan them a, a trailer. You gonna haul it out to the road anyway? Put it in the trailer. And we'll put, haul it off for you, and it's not sitting out there for. You know, weeks at a time waiting on meth heads to go through it and pick out what they want scattered all over the rest of the town. We can just haul it straight onto the dump at that point. So um, it's working well. Miss um, Porter, my assistant, she's um, she handles all that with Matt. And when people call in, she um, gets that you know worked out where when and where they want it. And uh, it's just working real well. It's, the town's a lot cleaner than it was when I first come in. So. Um, people are buying into it and, and trying to help keep the town clean. How about new businesses? Do you have any new businesses? We do have two or three new businesses. We had a new vape shop come in and uh, the old Black Cow building. Yeah, so there's three, actually three businesses moving in the old Black Cow building and a fourth one's coming, I believe, probably a coffee shop or something like that. But uh, there's a photography studio upstairs and then there's some uh, costume jury called Mad House Bling, I believe. And then Nutrify, Nature Fi, um, in one of the rooms as well. So, and then the two buildings over here in the um, Commercial Bank grassy area. There's two buildings over there, and both of those are rented right now as well. Uh, so a lot of businesses coming to town. Um, things are starting to move downtown as well. I've seen some movement on some of those places that were for sale, and see some construction going on inside a few of them. So. Um, Honeypath's growing. Honeypath's getting bigger, and uh, I just hope I had a little bit to do with it. If I did, great. If I if not, then the people are coming here for <laughs> for whatever reason. But uh, we we're glad to have them, and uh, glad that they're here. Um, Keith Dunn, uh, Dunn and Associates, wrote a couple of grants this past year. 
um, for sewer repair. Um, they were approved and I think we spent about a half a million dollars on upgrading some of the sewers around town. And um, we did get um, roughly $950,000 uh, from um, the federal COVID relief program, and we, we used a lot of that on uh, upgrading our water and sewer infrastructure. Um, a lot of that upgrade includes radio read type water meters. Um, you just drive by it real slow and it, it reads, the computer reads it. So that's, that's going to help a lot going forward, probably speed up the meter reading process and maybe get our water bills more consistent on the same day every month. Um, so yeah, we spent most of that for um, sewer and water upgrade. Um, we did get 1.9 million allotted to Honey Path from the federal COVID relief plan, um, ARP money is what we call it, um, American Rescue Plan, I guess what it stands for. We got another 950,000 we're sitting on right now. Uh, again, Dunn and Associates are in the process of writing a $6 million grant, six or $7 million grant where it's one million of that could be matching. So we're holding on to that, to hopefully turn that one million into six or seven million, which would go a lot further to um, increasing our reliability on our sewer and water and, and stopping the I and I from going to uh, where shows where we have to pay for treating storm water because some of our storm water is getting in our sewage um, lines. So hopefully we'll we'll have all that you know in, a, in much better shape in the next year or so. How about road work? Y'all done much road work this year? Have not had a chance to do a lot of road work. Um, did find out from Miss Wilson, uh, Cindy Wilson's our uh, Anderson County um, uh, representative for our area. Uh, she did got a letter. I actually got a letter right here. Um, I'll just read it to you um, briefly. It's just um, greetings, Mayor of Honey Path. Just like like to let you know funds left in the county account that can be used for road maintenance needs uh, currently the town has twenty nine thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars in that account so we're we're waiting to see where the best place to use that is um, some of the roads is um, black street and uh, u street route some of those over there uh, really could use some help, but uh, as you know, twenty nine thousand dollars don't go far when it comes to roads. But um, how many? Do you know how many miles of roads y'all have? In the I, city? D I don't. Is it a lot? Or? It is a lot. Um, a lot of it's state roads. Yeah, people get confused though between you know municipal and, and state and county roads. They don't know right. what's what. And they... Right. And 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 again, a thing that uh, people don't understand, and I didn't either till I got in this position and was able to talk to people. But if the state owns the road, then they own the storm drain, the sidewalk all of it not just the road so if the sidewalk's falling in you know if it's a state road it belongs to the state to fix you know honey path don't have the funds to fix all the roads and sidewalks that belong to the state also so um we're we're, we're in touch with dot and we're trying to get some of these roads that are in bad shape fixed but i tell you it's it's funny we complain about our roads a lot um around here i just come home from michigan and our roads are like streets of gold compared to those up north i mean they are they're horrible i mean uh, so our roads ain't as bad as is what you can find elsewhere now they're not as good as where you can find somewhere else too but uh, all that water under and in the road when it freezes it bucks and cracks and pops and it tears the asphalt all the, all the pieces so. how about housing got some new housing this year right do have quite a few housing i right off the top of my head i think i signed about 20 plats this year to subdivide them up into 10,000 square foot or, or larger that's the uh, rh10 um, zoning ordinance for a, for our RH10 area is a 10,000 square foot, which is uh, about a quarter acre. Um, one acre is 44,000 square foot, so one acre can house four houses if you split it up correctly. Um, and I've signed about 20 of those. I've got probably four or five new constructions going on right now, and permits for another 10 has probably been pulled already from the town. So. Um, there's a lot of growth coming to Honey Path. Um, How about recreation? Any updates on recreation this year? Tim and Hunter's doing a great job in the rec department. It's kind of slow right now. Not really a whole lot going on. Football season's wrapped up. We don't have a basketball. But everything league. is back in full swing this year. Oh, and, yeah, and really wide is. open. Wide open. Police kids camp last June was huge. Had 130 average a day, probably kids. Um, 
all the baseball went well. Uh, our guys did make it to the playoffs, but they, they lost out the last game. In the championship game, we lost out in baseball. Um, football as well. Uh, we had a real good football team this year. Went undefeated to the playoffs. Um, so the Rex doing real good. A um, lot of movement over there, too, as far as we're going to start spending some money over there. Some um, uh, Blake Sanders is the mayor of West Pelzer. He is also Anderson County's Parks and Rec guy. He's going around talking to all the municipalities about what the state, I mean, what the county can do. So we, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of upgrades to our rec and parks and stuff like that. We, we spend about uh, probably about five or six thousand dollars in uh, Dogwood Park behind Town Hall here. Uh, we raised the umbrella of the trees and took a few dead ones out. And uh, uh, the Silver Tans has requested two thousand dollars from hospitality. They're going to redo the stage. Um, they're going to supply the labor. We're going to supply the the material. So um, the town is. But uh, everything's looking real good as far as our parks and recreation as well. And tell everybody about your new police chief. Tell everybody a little bit about him. Um, as you all know, um, Chief Bozeman retired. Um, we've been talking about it for several months. He, he just told me he was tired. He'd been a police officer here in Hunting Path, the only place he's ever worked as far as police work goes. He's started out here. He retired here as the chief. Um, he done a good job for me for three years uh, as I was mayor. And he he come in that morning, said he was time to hang it up. And I asked him who I should replace him with interim. Till we can get somebody in there and he he said um i think you probably need to put barry new in that position so i did and uh, after interviewing five or six candidates um had a lot of good candidates had two or three that um, would have done us a great job i'm sure but i just felt like with barry's experience and all his training and um he's able to train in everything but hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, uh, shooting driving you know whatever so I just decided, um, you know, he's just go ahead and let him, you know, let him have his go at it. And uh, it's working out well for us so far. Um, some issues still we got that we need to address, but he's he's Johnny on the spot or Barry on the spot as it was. Uh, but I think uh, I think I think Barry's going to do us a real good job as chief. What are the major things you and council have? targeted as y'all's you know priorities for the the upcoming year maybe the first quarter particularly <clears throat> when i ran for mayor i had four or five bullet points that i wanted to accomplish my first four years one was to start some movement on Shikola mill site uh, we've removed 1800 tons of debris already and with this million dollars i spoke of earlier we should be able to um, tackle a lot more of that over there so hopefully hopefully by november uh, Shikola look a whole lot different. Another thing I campaigned on was um, some some things changing in the police department. Uh, one, getting the front door open, and for the most part, we got that accomplished with with very little work uh, inside to keep a separation from the offices and the lobby. So we had to build a wall in there um, per um, sled. You know, you can't you can't have access to certain areas in the police department, but we needed the lobby open. So that's another thing that uh, that I was able to accomplish. Uh, but you asked for going forward. Uh, one of the things I talked about was lowering the cost of utility bills in Honey Path. Um, one of the things I did not long after I was mayor, mayor was remove the $5 fee that was tacked onto the water bill a time ago when um, the EMS needed help funding. Um, I removed that, so I've... Um, I've lowered our utility bills a little bit that way. I, I did add um, three dollars back to it, remove five, but I, I added three dollars back to it in terms of trash fees, because that's that's what um, most trash companies around are getting about fifteen dollars a month. And uh, our equipment's old, and um, everybody likes raises, and our guys hadn't had a raise in a long time, so we did raise a little bit back on the water bills to um, uh, you know help fund some raises and new equipment and uh, things such as that uh, but the one thing council and I going forward and this is what you asked so let me get to that uh, is to continue lowering the, in our utility costs and the way we're going to do that is sewer upgrades uh, we're going to upgrade our infrastructure 
Uh, we're going to reduce the storm water runoff into the sewer that we have to pay wear shoals to uh, filter for us. So if we can stop all the rainwater, we won't have a big inrush of um, sewage to wear shoals when it rains real hard. So uh, we're looking at that. We're looking at you know getting all our water leaks fixed and you know stop leaking. So uh, we're selling closer to 100% of the water we buy from Belton versus 65 to 70. So if we can get if we can get uh, get our leaks fixed and get our storm water out of the sewer. Uh, that's going to go a long way to helping citizens um, with, their, with their utility bills. Um, so that's the biggest thing we're going to try to tackle this year. And it's going to take a lot, and it's going to take a lot of money. Uh, but hopefully grants are going to pay for that. And that's, uh, we'll, we'll see. That's what we're looking forward to.